Hello, my name is Tom Duvall and welcome to our In Orchard session focusing on modern approaches to water. Almond growers are distributed across a large area of California. With that spread comes variability in water availability, management, and conservation practices. However, all our growers agree that water efficiency is a top priority not just in a dry year, but every year. Water is such a valued resource that the California almond community is committed to reducing the amount of water used to grow a pound of almonds by 20% by 2025. Today, we will talk with several growers, each representing a different almond growing region, to get their perspective on the different strategies, tools, and partnerships they employ to get the most crop per drop. So in this session, we're down in Madera, California, the southern part of the almond growing region, and we get to um, visit with Matt Angel. Matt and I have known each other for quite a while, but I really want him to share his story, his family story. How do you start farming? And tell me about the farm. Well, just like uh, many multi-generational farmers, you know, you, you're, you're born into it, and uh, you, you pick up a shovel when you're young and you go to work. Um, this farm has been in our family for a little over a hundred years, a lot like uh, uh, many California farmers. Uh, come from different parts of the world and, and landed in this Mediterranean climate. And as you said, we're south of uh, Merced and uh, you know, these, these soils are alluvial and amazing. You know, we want to preserve this ground uh, for as many generations as possible. You know, my son is uh, as part of our farming operation. He manages what we see around us. So Matt, what are you doing different with irrigation than your dad did? You must be doing it different today. Absolutely, but I think my dad, you know, he, he drove, you know, what we do now. Um, you know, we, we used to flood and, you know, uh, flood irrigation was the, you know, the tool that everybody had. You know, it, it came from out of Fryant, you know, out of the reservoirs, uh, come down through canal. And, and virtually there was no energy needed to, to uh, run flood irrigation. The problem was is that my dad would stay up all night. He'd get up every two hours so that the f field wouldn't flood uh, at the bottom end. Uh, but what, what, what happened was in flood irrigation, the, the, the very front of the, where the valves, you know, would, uh, where you'd open the valves, um, it, it, it got more water. In the middle, it was about right. And, and then in the it was in the right. end, it was Wasn't too much. Wasn't very uniform. Yeah. Now, there are soils that you can, you can flood and put the right level to, and they'll, they'll work. But 98% but of people and, you know, and, and system design, uh, it is way more efficient to use a drip system. A drip system, though, is pressurized, so it does take some energy to, to pressurize that. Um, but the efficiency difference as far as growing end to end uh, is incredible. You know, we, we put the right amount of water, the right amount of nutrients. Uh, and you can actually put the nutrients in through the drip system, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And for us, again, looking at that, that uh, soil moisture uh, sensors, there was five of them. So in, in any crop, there's, you know, an active root zone. So typically it's in these trees, it's from 12 to 24 inches, right? So if I want to hit that spot, I know how, I need to know exactly how long it takes to get to that active root zone and not push past and it. And your sensors help guide that decision. It's incredible, yeah. Tom. It yeah. gives us that insight underneath the ground that we'd never have otherwise. So Matt, one thing I love about you is you always bring props and graphics, and I know you made up some graphics. Maybe share the hero concept and we'll get to see one of your graphs. All right, Tom, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I may have missed my calling, you know, not being a teacher, uh, certainly is something that's highly valuable. Um, the hero uh, is basically, as we looked at the system that we built, we have a company called uh, Water Informatics. And what we do is we run a SCADA system, uh, which allows us to measure virtually anything on this ranch, turn valves on, turn valves off, turn pumps on. Uh, we can look at, you know, well depths, you know, how, how the water, uh, how it's, it's 
how the, the pump is pumping, you know, pumping water levels, standing water, pressure, high, low. Through that process, though, we know that it that it's that it's data that's coming back that is that's objective. And when you have objective data, you're actually able to it's actionable. And I thought to myself, the the thing that has to happen is that we should have a process that actually allows us to um, look at what what we've done and then make a decision on what we're going to do and then be right on target. Right. So Michael and I, we've we've started a, another little venture called Crop Target. And what Crop Target did was uh, it's we wrote a process called a resource efficiency assessment index. Right. And really what that does is allows us almost like you would look at at any industry. Uh, it, it's a measurement. It's a benchmark. And if we can benchmark what growers do, um, we can continually get better, right? And I think that's that's what we did. So I'd like to show you, Tom, if, if I don't mind bringing up one of my graphs, you know, my hero chart. So as you can see right here, it's a resource efficiency assessment index. The REACTS is what I called it. It's uh, water productivity um, and for almonds. It's high efficiency resource operator or, or a hero. And what happens is, is, is you look at the yield, as it goes up, you can see a yield from 2,800 pounds up to, to what's this, 48? 48. And then how much water and, and fertilizer we use. So what we've done is that anybody that's on this side of the line basically qualifies as a hero. So if you only produce, um, 2,000 pounds, but you use less resources, you can still be a hero. Or if you produce 4,500 or 4,300 pounds and you use a certain amount of water, you still become a hero. So you can see the, the diagonal line. Everybody on this side of the, the line is a hero. And we think that's going to be really important going forward because what we want to do is as time goes along, it's going to be really important for growers to see um, things like uh, a reduction in greenhouse gases. Uh, that we we take this amazing or these amazing crops, and we take carbon dioxide out of the soil or out of the air, and then we 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 put out oxygen. Right. In that process, carbon gets sequestered. Um, we also know that these these trees, just like the forest. In fact, we probably ought to call these or orchards agroforestry because we're actually climate conditioning. Anytime that you're around orchards and, and productive uh, crops, uh, it's an environment that everybody likes to be in. So we think as a, as a hero grower or a high efficiency resource operator, that gets right back to sustainability. You know, if you're, if you're, in, that, you're in that upper line, your sustainability becomes stronger. So it helps us conserve water, it helps us grow healthier crops, uh, and in game, it makes us a hero. So Matt, you know it's one of the goals for the Almond Board to continue to improve on how much crop we produce with the resources we put out between water and, and nutrients. Can you share some of the approaches and techniques you're using to help us reach that goal of that reduction? Well, Tom, I think it's, it's actually knowing where your crop is at what state of, uh, or what stage of growth it's in. You know, it's called a phenological stage. And I know that sounds a little bit technical, but you know, if I could show you a chart real quick, we can- Oh, kinda... more of your charts. Yeah, bring, yeah. Them up. bring them up. All right. So if we understand where we are in bloom and how much water is required there, we know exactly where that target is, right? Nut fill is really important because that's where we get you know, the, the, the nut fills, uh, and that's where we get a plump, you know, amazing almond. Kind of where we're at today. Where we're at today, exactly, yes. Tom. And then we get into hole split, and hole split's a really critical point for these almonds because it's really incredible, it's important to do something called a regulated deficit. Now that deficit basically is that during that time, you know, we've been pushing, pushing, and then we drop the, the water off so that it actually helps, you know, uh, to 
to basically split this hole so that the almond's ready to process and harvest. So that's a time where we can conserve some of the water that we're applying. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, and then here we are in harvest, and then here we are in what we call regenerate. But if you'll look at this curve, you can see when we irrigate and when we don't irrigate. And if we can tighten this up and understand these phenological stages, it will be critical in water conservation. So another area that's really important to growers are these things that we, we refer to as resource conservation districts. So there are areas, I think every county, right? Absolutely. As, as a resource conservation district that helps manage within that county the resources. And you're really involved in that. You're on the board, I think, right? I am, Tom. And my dad was on the board. You know, we've always felt it was important, you know, to have public service. Um, one of the things that, that, uh, that the RCD does, it's a voluntary group. Uh, it'll, and it's, it's specific to um, resource conservation, water, land, uh, crops. Uh, what I like about it as well is it, it has an, a, a urban and rural component to it. So you see a, an RCD that's in, in San Mateo, uh, and, and they're doing school gardens and different things. So RCDs are a really viable uh, entity. Um, the, the thing that we uh, look at in, in Madera County, along with, you know, we've, we've talked about, you know, with our, we, we call it next gen, our youth group, um, what can they do uh, and how can they promote, you know, good water conservation? How do they talk about people growing their own gardens? You know, how do we reduce lawns in general? I mean, those things are really important. But for us at our RCD, uh, we've been specific to cover crops. Uh, part of that is the, those cover crops, we feel like during the rainy season, instead of the water running out and becoming a, a, a hazard or a, a problem, uh, these, this, this grass basically, or these cover crops, take the water because the, you know, it's rooted. We use a variety of different crops, different, different species in that crop. So you could see a radish, you could see a, a mustard. I mean, there's oats, there's vetch, there's clover, there's a variety. And the idea is to open that soil up and become healthier. So right? rather than that water running off the field to the ditch, it's staying on the property and being going into the groundwater. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that as you open that ground up, that ground accepts that water and it doesn't run off. Right. The key is, and I think that's where the RCDs come in play is, is that, you know, what's the management practice, right? When should you cut that down so it doesn't compete? We, we are in dry conditions right now, so it's really important for us to understand when we should, we should knock that crop down, get it short, where the, only the clover's growing, and then it might not, and it just doesn't take much water. So you can see in the orchard, you know, right now we, we, uh, we flail more, mowed our, uh, our um, crop uh, about three weeks ago. We shut it down. Uh, that was really important. But the RCD in general, the, the idea is, is uh, um, knowledge transfer. So it's education. So it's going out and having field days with growers. It's us doing different demonstrations to help growers understand how to get their soils healthier. Um, and our, our plan in our RCD in, in, in the San Joaquin region is to have a million acres of, of uh, cover crops or healthy soils in the next five years. And you mentioned that it's a dry year, and this is a dry year for us. We came off last year, it was a dry year, we're having another one. That's not an uncommon thing to you as a grower, but the RCD, how do they help as far as with the groundwater? Are they helping with this, this whole concept of SIGMA, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act? Can you speak to that at all? Yeah, Tom, I think all of us are, you know, all of us are watching, and, and I think it's important as important as anything is to educate people so that they actually know uh, what sustainability groundwater management means. Yes. And I think that that is something that, that we're working on. Um, I think that, you know, if we can do that collectively as a community, uh, I think that's going to be a game changer. So the RCD is engaged in that. Uh, it's, it's a really important process. But again, um, from Madera South, 
uh, is at Merced is basically our rain curtain. So we just have less rainfall. Yes. But what's amazing about this ground is, is that we have these big alluvial soils that grow these amazing crops. And uh, so we've got to figure it out. Yeah. Matt, we work with RCDs as the almond board in a number of parts of the state working with them with mobile labs. Yeah. So the concept of mobile labs is, is we send a crew out into an orchard and we test it for efficiency. How evenly do we distribute water across the field? And that's an area that I think we'd be really interested in working with Madera RCD. Um, is that something that you guys are doing now or is that something in the future that you're looking at doing a mobile lab? Um, you know, I think we've talked before, Tom, and I think it's critical that the, you know, that we have a, a partnership with the Almond Board in uh, that mobile lab. A mobile lab is, you know, we talked about technology, you know, most of the day, um, but the best technology that we can have is distribution uniformity. We basically have a closed loop system in these irrigation systems, these drip systems. So from point A in the corner to point, you know, B or C or D, in every corner uh, should have exactly the same amount of water with the same amount of uh, fertilizer. So that is, if we had to, to list one important uh, component of an irrigation system, distribution uniformity, and, and that relationship uh, with the almond board is critical for us. So uh, we are interested in doing that. And we have found this to be a wonderful thing for growers, even from an educational perspective, the labs that we, we've worked with in different regions of, this, of the state, they go out and do this test, and then they sit down with the grower and review what that all means and really brings it down to earth for the grower. And, and we've found huge improvements from doing it. I think you've got, again, it's, it's measuring. Yes, and it, it goes back to your measure concept, right. yes. And it's objective measurement. You actually go out and actually measure and, and you give the grower a report. And I think it's a, it's a third party report. Uh, Tom, I think that's really important because I think people trust that. That's the critical link. The, the, the next step would be how do I solve the problem, right? And how do we, you know, how do we get better at, uh, you know, uh, using, you know, uh, how to get the system cleaned up, how to increase its efficiency, how do we operate it? A lot of times, you know, being an irrigation designer, a lot of times we build a two set system that people would run in one set. Yes. And I think that that is really important that people start to understand um, that it's critical to be able to, you know, if, and, and here's, the, here's the concept with distribution uniformity. If you had 30 trees, right? And in the center is where your water came in, 15 trees on one side and 15 on the other. Let's just say that it's an apple tree, right, Tom? On, if your distribution uniformity is off, you'll have 10 apples or 100 apples on the first five trees. You'll have 70 apples on the next five trees, and you'll have 60. Now, in that one run, but it happens on the other side as well, so that's 25% of your truck right. of your orchard producing and having that even distribution of water and nutrients across the whole brings the yield even across all for the amount of materials that you're putting down. Absolutely. Yes. And yeah. you're farming this ground. I mean, basically you're running, you know, you've got tractors, you've got all kinds of uh, till, all kinds of practices that you're doing. So it is critical in the end to farm at 100%. Christine, we're, we're kind of in the start of what's been a dry year for us. Yeah. Um, even though we've gotten pretty good at learning how to live within dry years, but how do you deal with water? How, what's your plan for water efficiency? You know, what do you do with it? Well, I have to be really strategic. I'm in two different water districts, and in one, we generally have pretty plentiful supplies. That doesn't keep me from being conservative, though, because I'm always thinking about, you know, saving overall, because there's no point in wasting, right? But in our other district, we are sort of low men on the to totem pole when it comes to water rights. So sometimes we don't get water. In fact, the last drought, we actually 
had zero water allotments for two years, so we had to get very clever. Um, our water district did this great project where they partnered with the cities, three local cities, which Modesto, Ceres, and Turlock, and they took their municipal uh, treated water and we built a pipeline over to a canal that we are connected into and had it piped in. And so... So you're recycling that yes, municipal water. Yes, we are using Excellent. recycled water. And it actually accounts for a good portion of our district needs. And not all of it, by any means. But it's, you know, it's at an affordable price. And we, the farmers in that water district, we paid for that. And it's considered one of the, the premier recycled water uh, far, you know, from cities to farm projects in the country. It got actually several awards. We're quite proud of it at Del Puerto Water District. That's excellent. And that's something that some countries, they live on recycled water exactly. for doing all their crop irrigation. I know, so, yeah. yeah. I know there are other projects in the state and I hope, I hope that there's a lot more. I don't think anything should be wasted. And if we can get two uses out of every drop of water, even better. I know. The public quite often thinks about water when we go into dry years, but in years of plenty, most people don't really think about water much, yeah. right? But as a grower, that's a constant battle. I never stop, I never stop thinking about water. In the, in the good years, I can relax a little bit in that I don't actually have to stress out as much about it, but I'm always thinking ahead. So in a good year, we're able, into, so in the Del Puerto Water District, we're able to do what's called carryover water. And so we can save water from one year and carry it over to the next year. So I'm always seeing in a good year, I'm like, okay, yes, I have a decent amount of water. Do I use it? No, I, I'm not gonna use it all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my same conservative plan because I still get a good crop off of it and I'm gonna see how much I can save. So in case next year is dry, I have it. And some growers in this area are actually taking water in the dormant time of winter months when there's plenty and putting it out in their fields and flooding their fields and building what we call recharge. Right, that's a great opportunity, especially now that we seem to be in this weather cycle of feast or famine. Um, and so when that rain comes, we need to harness it as much as we can and in as many ways as we can. So yeah, al almond farmers do have a really good opportunity because we're dormant in the winter to take some of that on. Yeah, water water's really near and dear to me, my background. Um, before I joined the board, I was an irrigation designer. So it's really near and dear to me. And it's exciting um, to be in the position I'm in because in a few weeks, we're doing what we're calling an irrigation summit. Yes. And it's actually for irrigation designers. So I realize as a grower, when you put an irrigation system in, that's a 20 plus year decision. Once you put it in, you can't change it. No, you can't. So, um, Not a lot, little things. Right, so we're reaching out to the design community to really bring them up into the latest technologies to help them in the decision of how they design that 20 year decision to give you a better irrigation system. It's something I'm really excited about. Yeah, I mean, I'm having that opportunity right now and I'm working with some designers for our new orchard that we're gonna start to redevelop this fall. And we're, we're gonna jump right into it and we're gonna put in the Cadillac of irrigation systems that gives us flexibility to weather some of you know the issues we're dealing with in climate. So we can either go with, um, if we want to be super, super conservative with our uh, subsurface irrigation system that, you know, we, we lose way less to evaporation and it's really good at targeting fertilization events, you know, at the root zone. Or we, if we have the option to switch to micro sprinklers, say if we have just planted a cover crop and we just want to water it in you know, yeah. right before we get into the rainy season. And we were talking, you're gonna put in a variable frequency drive, yeah. a VFD there, yes, we to are. really help you manage your energy. Exactly. So you deliver exactly what you need, not what the pump supplies. Exactly. Right. 
maybe talk a little bit about the groundwater recharge. You know, a lot of um, that's been an area where um, I think almonds have the opportunity to step up and really be part of the solution of more sustainably managing this precious groundwater resources by uh, really using the farm and working lands to help uh, put more money in the groundwater bank, so to speak. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about what you're doing there. Yeah, so um, I have kind of the two kind of focuses. One is uh, we're working with a hydrology department down in Kern County mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to uh, to use uh, on-farm recharge, actually using the pecans as, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. a site for that because they are riparian, they can right. deal with the water. And so uh, that we're fortunate to work with a local consultant in Davis mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, sustainable conservation. Yep. Um, and then the hydrology department and uh, Bashan and Associates is the consultant who's mm -hmm, done mm -hmm. some projects. And the uh, um, the idea there is, is that uh, in the San Joaquin Valley, you have years of, of excess flows where you have a lot of rain and some years you don't have but when you have the water you want to get in the ground so right. how can you get in ground and keep land productive and so that's the idea we've done there and that's been it's it's been a good uh, uh project so far and it's been proven as well uh, proven proven good mm -hmm. um, um but it's just one potential you know, right. tool for the whole san joaquin area um because with climate change, we're going to have more variability. Yeah. So we're going yeah. to have more years where we have a lot of water and we want to get in the ground. And then during those other years, we want to be very efficient with it and do our job for that. And so, you know, so that's why we have the drip irrigations and all that. Right. 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 But the um, where I where I where I hope um, we do more research in is that probably the best on farm recharge is just your orchard itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and using the water holding capacity of the soil. Mm -hmm to mm -hmm. start that process because once the water holding capacity is full and you have more rainfall, that's where you start the aquifer recharge. Right. So to the extent that we can invest our soil structure, perhaps mm -hmm. with the right cover crop in the right mm -hmm. place, the right mix, then if we can get more percolation in the ground, we're gonna have right. less runoff. Right. And we're gonna have just an overall better, we're gonna be able to use that flow. So I think, you know, I always look at it as like, you know, we are we are blessed to be in a Mediterranean climate because we can grow pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. But when it rains, it rains, and when it doesn't, it doesn't. And so when it does rain, you want to put this put that water to best use. And so even if we can get a couple inches of net ET in the ground every year, mm -hmm. that's two inches that stays and goes to aquifer right. recharge as we right. go. So um, that's where I'm kind of excited about. And then as we go forward, um, perhaps uh, growers can get uh, can get credit, maybe even a carbon credit for their cover crop provide, and also get credit for providing uh, pollinator forage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but maybe some type of groundwater credit. So I think that'd be the right, the trifecta, which right, right. if the research proves that, but that would be something that I that would excite me. Thank you for joining us in the orchard today. We hope you enjoyed learning about our growers' modern approaches to water. Next up is Filmed in the Orchard, utilizing technology for farming efficiencies. Throughout these sessions, don't forget to submit your questions for the live Q&A on Wednesday.